This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Here in the Mayhem Studio for now in Pittsburgh, PA. It's time to get geeky, get techy. It is the Awesome Cast. Uh, myself, a video and podcast producer here in the Pittsburgh area with Sorgatron Media. With me is my fine panel of experts uh, back off of their week off of uh, blowing things up for 4th of July. First of all, he is the gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going? Blowing up things, scaring dogs, scaring <laughs> children. That's why my dog was barking at you so much when you came in today. Uh, also Ooh. with us, she is the Director of Sales and Marketing at the Scare House, Katie Dudas, the Dudders. Hi. I, I learned a, a thing this week through my Scare House. Thing. Through your Scare House? Yes. yes. Ask a, uh, give away a, couple, a pair of tickets and ask a, what's your favorite internet cat celebrity? You'll get a lot of responses in 24 hours. <laughs> That's amazing. I learned about a lot of internet cats that I didn't even know about. So. See, see, you you could use your your work social media marketing endeavors to do research on personal uh, interests, yes. right? So, and number one was Grumpy Cat. Of course, of course. <laughs> Grumpy Cat is the uh, John the Cena are? of the cat internet uh, world. Little Bub, um, General Meow, um, Princess. Oh shoot, darn! I can't remember the one. The black cat with the giant bottom. Te- yeah, there's there's a whole gang of them. I learned a lot. Is this this face I'm looking? Is that the face that other people make when I'm talking about wrestling that nobody understands? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. Good. I'm glad that we're we're kind of connected on that. But this is the awesome cast. Like I said, we talk about like everything from gadgets to technology to 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 cats on the internet. Uh, you know, we all all around uh, for you guys. Hang out and kind of celebrate here in uh, from a Pittsburgh state of mind. Uh, you can check us out at awesomecast.com. Check out all the episodes, and uh, you can also check out. On our YouTube and Facebook, uh, we've been posting. We post all of. We threw them all out there. All of Chilla's awesome tips are out there for iPhone. I was a little bit for a, a Samsung Galaxy iPad, uh, especially around iOS 10. So check out the YouTube for Awesome Cast and Awesome Cast is the name over there, or the Awesome Cast uh, uh, Facebook page and the videos section there. And there's a lot of awesome tips. If you like them, put a like on them. Leave a comment. Um, or share them with people you think that they'd be interested in um, those. Uh, we really like doing them. I think, Chilla, you were saying you have a whole mess of new tips. You, you're already ready to get back on the green screen I for I think we're to get back on the green screen for that, and then I think we should schedule in September right before iOS 11 launches mm. to get back on again. So we need to do some now and then some That's right, two months you, from now. Because you've been hands-on with iOS 11 yes. for a little bit now. So I'm you're on gonna beta be 3 as of beta this week. Beta 3. Whoa. So you're going to be the expert. So so when you get, to, when you get your brand new iPhone 8 or whatever it's going to be uh, coming up here in the fall, like this is the guy to hit up uh, for tips around that. Uh, you can also please subscribe to the Awesome Cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course those video versions I mentioned on YouTube and Facebook. You can join us live here. Typically, Tuesday evenings um, um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, you know, either on our Facebook page or live.awesomecast.net. We'll direct you over to our video page, and you can click on the latest one. That should be the live one we got going on. You can join us in the chat, just like Doug Durda of uh, Yin's Love Barbecue that, uh, that's that been helping me pick the right sandwich at Get-Go recently. Uh, Brandon out in the uh, Oklahoma City, uh, Wheels down here south of the city, and everybody else popping in for the evening. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for being a part of the show. Uh, th- uh, shout out to our friends that have been streaming us riversedgepgh.com we are actually streaming them on the live feed before we get going we're going to try to make that a little bit of a practice also uh, if you if you follow my my stuff over on uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook uh, or and Instagram I took a little tour of their new studio at Mr. Small's Funhouse uh, it's it's the same and there's a great article I think it was in the Trib that they, they shared over on their uh, social media as well uh, so uh, it, they, they moved in there after that uh, unfortunate fire at Melville Studio and uh, it, it's the old old studio for for the fun house that 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 recently has moved to the north side or north north side north hills something like i think it's north side 
Um, but they're in a room where like uh, uh, Usher and 50 Cent and uh, Annie Flag have uh, recorded albums, and now they're doing the River's Edge broadcasting from over there. Uh, we're over there, and of course the schedule's going to be uh, mixing up here soon in the coming weeks. So uh, uh, right now I believe we're still uh, 8 a.m. after uh, Funny Money. Uh, so go check us out over there and check out all the great shows happening at the River's Edge PGH.com. And also thanks to our friends at the 405 Media.com, also carrying the show here and uh, broadcasting it uh, every weekday at. 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's noon Eastern time for us uh, here in Pittsburgh, where we're coming from, of course. And uh, and and thank you so much. And thank you so much. She's having internet issues. I just got. But in California, we still have a producer. Uh, producer Missy is hanging out there, and she's going to try to keep us um, in line remotely here. Thank so, goodness. Yes. <laughs> Were you were you worried about this yes, going into? I can it? read you my text. Oh no! What, what, what happened? <laughs> no, I was just like, I just realized you're not going to be there tonight. So, can't can't just hang out with the the guys. It's I get it. You know, we got pizza at least. So yeah, she said I got more pizza. So was, that that is true. That is true. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Um, of course, shout out from the chat room because uh, Brandon out there is saying that his awesome thing of the week is NASCAR technology because he watched Cars 3 and thought it was really good. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Wheels out there, he says his awesome thing of the week is uh, he has cable internet again. Yay! Yeah, I'm having problems with that with my business too. So it can be kind of rough. Um, but no, good to see you're, that's happening. And, uh, and, and and I know Wheels just moved into a new place down there. Uh, so it's good to see everybody's doing good. All right, awesome things. Uh, Katie, (laughs) what's your awesome thing of the week? So um, MIT researchers used a Kinect to scan a T-Rex skull because uh, the normal 3D printers, it's too big to to be handled by a normal 3D printer. So Mm -hmm. they broke out a Kinect and they got some free software and scanned it. And uh, they're planning on using this technology uh, in other fields of paleontology, like sending it out into the actual field Mm -hmm. and being able to scan and easily send essentially giant skulls and bones to other researchers big in archaeology too so this is this is really cool it's it's amazing that it, it's literally a 150 dollar connect and free software to scan a that's awesome. giant t-rex skull and, and for being something like i mean the connect has kind of been deprecated as far as gaming goes at mm-hmm. least it, yeah. it, i don't think they're making anything for it it got separated from the console right it, yeah it did get, it got separated from the console and i haven't heard of any connect games the one thing that we were talking about actually at work, Crazy Kraus and I, was, you know, I'm glad even with the Scorpio, they're going to let you use an adapter to hook it up to the Scorpio because I still like it for all the voice commands. Mm-hmm. So unless they can build something with at least mic input, it's something I still want. And I, I'm guessing because of things like this, and I know this was one of their kind of sidebar projects, I could see this. The, the connect living around for ideas like this, especially when it's 200 times cheaper mm-hmm. than, than the 3d scanner alternatives. Um, I could definitely see more people latching onto this. I'm interested when, if this really, if stuff like this takes off, will they miniaturize it? Does it need to be as large? Does it need for, for something like this? Yeah. Does it need the microphone array? Mm-hmm. Um, or will they kind of take it and break out the technology within the connect? for thing for for things like this it feels like because we know like we we know there's this whole other r d thing going on at microsoft right i mean you know there was a, a thing where uh, uh josh polsky i don't know if he was with the verge or engadget at the time like kind of viewed it so there's something that they could be working on that 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 you know has this technology Oh, I'm sure. And they, they have their whole garage program. If you look at their garage apps, it's all the apps where they it's kind of like the Google. We're going to throw this out there and see if it sticks. It's something a bunch of developers came up with and thought was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could see this. I'm, I'm sure that they're not just playing with software, right? I'm sure they're playing with hardware. And when you think about miniaturizing this and throwing it on the front of a of a hollow lens, I'm sure it'll it'll bring even more ideas to life. Because think about it, if you had the real-time image gathering of the 3D model, and then as it was scanning the 3D model, it was showing what it captured in a mm-hmm. holographic display over mm-hmm. here to make sure you gathered all the, the points of accuracy that you need. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure they're working on stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's just, you know, it might be a little bit before we see that consumer thing. Mm-hmm. So, But there's definitely some cool, cool stuff uh, happening with that technology still. Uh, Shilla... 
Uh, we're, we're 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 accidentally going gaming uh, uh, for all of our awesome things. Apparently here, uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So I actually heard about this on Windows Weekly, and it it's I actually use some some of these types of sites for for iOS and Android and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize there was one for Xbox, and it's it's kind of touted as an Xbox One deals site. It's called StoreParser.com. Um, one of the things I like about this is you can actually track price change and you can also sort on price. The thing that I like about it is you can sort low to high and free is included in the low sort. Um, so you can find all the stuff that's on sale for free. Nice. So and as you're well aware, as a three th- Xbox 360 person, you can go and buy all the Xbox One stuff for free mm-hmm. and then kind of keep it off to the side for if and when you get an Xbox One. You have a ton of content just sitting there waiting to play. I tell you what, I, I actually uh, unplugged my 360 a week ago <laughs> and still had the reminder to make sure I get in there and get the free thing for mm-hmm. this half of the month. So, it, it, Especially because, like I said, since it's, the, it's store parsing the entire Microsoft store, you can still get the Xbox 360 content. They have a lot of map add-on packs. Watch Dogs for Xbox One is free. Um, Dead or Alive um, downloadable content's free. It's just it, it's, it's very interesting to me that, that that you can easily parse this, and I like it because, like I said, uh, my Xbox One is actually unplugged right now, but I'm still going and downloading uh, all kinds of content. Or down go purchasing free content just mm-hmm. so I have it when I plug it back in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, it, mm-hmm. Kind of along with this, uh, if I can have an awesome thing B uh, mm-hmm. to go with this. Uh, uh, Katie, you know, we were talking the other day about, you know, I was looking for some stuff for the office and mm-hmm. we we're talking about some thrift stores. So I went into one, the red, white, and blue over here on Sawmill Run Boulevard. And, uh, you know, I, I always take a peek, you know, at ah, what's happening in the DVDs. Maybe they have a couple video games. Maybe they have some computer stuff, right? You never know. You know, sometimes you find gold. Um, Chill, I need to tell you about the monitor that I found that's sitting over there. I don't know if you can probably see it from there. Um, oh, some nice. fun stuff. Some fun stuff I picked up that, that is useful for the office. But I go into Red, White, and Blue, and I find their uh, their their video game section, and I cleaned up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I mean, the typical thing, there's a stack of just dance games for the Wii. Tempted, but passed. Um, it, but uh, but like this, these were like th- like three and four bucks for most of these. Um, I you know for the Wii, I got the Star Wars like the complete collection, uh, an SSX game, which I mean those are you know it's a snowboard game, it's gotta be fun. Uh, I believe this is the second um, the second Splinter Cell. I love the Splinter Cell games, and I don't have a lot of games from my original Xbox that I picked up from from some from from some from some friends of ours that we talked to on the show. But the big steal, Mario Kart Wii. Do you know how freaking expensive it is for main Mario games, especially Mario Kart? Even as far as, like, GameCube, Wii, you're still paying at least $50 used for those. Found it for $20. Awesome. So, and it was real close because the guy read the label and thought it was $9.99 at first. And I was just like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm getting this. Um, But, yeah, no. It just, you know, maybe not. All the time, maybe not if you're looking for anything specific, but you never know what you can stumble on in these these thrift stores like this. And, and venture out, like get out of your neighborhood too. Um, I went over to uh, what is is that Crafton over there on Noble's Town Road? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, I checked out the one here. You know, I want to. Uh, I have some things I got to pick up the next couple of days, and I want to try to swing into some other, in other parts of the city. You especially go to the nice neighborhoods; they give away good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, just in general. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it just kind of a little, little quick tip there, but my actual awesome thing of the week, it, I love, I am, a, I loved when I was able to play a doom RPG on my flip phone. I love, you know, if you look at the games on my, on my phone, most of them are throwback arcade, uh, X-Men arcade, Sega Genesis games, uh, you know, uh, Carmageddon that I used to have on my DOS PC back in the day. <laughs> Doom, I just keep on here because, you know, I, I think it's just awesome that, you know, always think it's awesome that I have, like, on this device uh, games that took, like, a $3,000 computer 20 years ago. You know, just, like, my youth is in, in, on a little brick here. So I, I'm a big fan of um, every time we get an article, and these always trickle into the show, uh, there's a catalog of all the devices that uh, can somehow run Doom. 
um, including the side of a truck, toasters, pianos, trucks. Um, you know, uh, here's a picture of a, a, a Kodak, uh, I guess a digital camera, kind of an old school digital camera where it's playing on the screen. Uh, they talk a little bit about, uh, this is, I don't know what is this looks like an ATM. <laughs> so, uh, oh, this is on Link NYC, which I think is their, um, their kiosk, their, their Wi-Fi kiosk there, there in New York city. Uh, it, it just, you know, really cool, uh, to be able to go through something like this. Quake is another thing that pops up a lot, but nothing's as much as they go into a little bit, even like the story in this article about the super Nintendo version and how, uh, id software didn't even want to bother with it because how bad Wolfenstein 3d was for the super Nintendo, but they had another company make it and brought it to them and actually had better music than most of the other versions. Uh, so it's just a really cool article to see how you know these get kind of shoehorned on these things <laughs> and everything um i love it oh oh i see this is the um well even to the point where you know these things are like playable in a browser thanks to because uh, i'm realizing on this link nyc uh image that's actually from archive.org mm -hmm. where you can play a lot of those games in browser for free so so you know, again, just kind of a really cool uh, uh, look back and like all those crazy things you can do with it. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't there um, somebody put didn't somebody put Doom or I'm thinking at least at Ubuntu or something like on like the Google Google Glass, you know, things like that. Yeah, so, and then I, I've seen too where didn't they put was it Doom or Wolfenstein Wolfenstein 3D or whatever they put it on the Touch Bar on the new Mac. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's. it's I, I was reading this article real quick, and someone said that they got it running. You know the, you know some of the printers that have the little color readout. Yeah. For like making co like if you have a multifunction printer, if it does like co print, right copy scan. Right, right. That little screen on there. They, yep. they They said that they got it running on that. You know, I got a stack of those over here in the corner. I'm <laughs> yeah. looking to get rid of. Maybe we should load Doom on them before I send them. Network them all together. One. Network them together. And we'll play Doom. Sure. Be more fun if we were playing Wolf or uh, Duke Nukem 3D. But anyways, uh, hey, uh, Brandon wants to shout out the PlayStation does something uh, similar. And their PlayStation Plus system uh, does <clears throat> like like freebie games. I know uh, uh, Chat and Chachi were talking about it over the weekend when we were going to a job. So so I mean, and and, I, I, and that runs on PC too. What the play the PlayStation PlayStation Plus stuff? Not I don't know if it's the Plus stuff, but you know how they have that streaming network where you pay. It's, right, it's a f one. I think it's one week free. It's the $9, old they, nine dollars ninety nine cents for the first month and nineteen ninety nine dollars. Right, right. So dollars. This is the PlayStation Anywhere. I think that they were doing, and so now that's mm -hmm. on the PC. Yeah, so you can get that whole. Now, obviously, it's not all PS four games. A lot of it's PS three yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. But and the the interesting thing that I was reading about today on that was that <clears throat> because it's streamed, um, as long as you have a pretty decent internet connection and it's not as reliant on the processing power of the pc so a, a lot of the people were saying yeah they're running it on an older windows surface device which the, the surface devices are kind of lower and when you look at it it's not a low-end piece of equipment but it's graphics processors definitely like the intel baked in video chipset it's not like they're running some crazy nvidia or ati graphics chipset um, so I, I thought, yep, see remote play on PC and Mac. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool that, I mean, there, you're going to see a lot of these things porting. And I also read like, I think the switch, someone found code in the, the Nintendo switch that it actually has an old NES emulator built into it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a sign of things to come. So, I mean, this is, this is no different than what we talked about years ago with things like on life, mm -hmm. right? Like this whole kind of decentralized, uh, uh, video gaming kind of idea. So, I mean, but, and also, I don't know how this entirely works. Like, is this a thing that I can, you know, it, it, do I have to have a PlayStation in, in network in order for this to work or, or allows me to get on the service or is it, uh, cause I think the thing I'm looking at here looks like more of a remote play, my PS4. Yeah. Uh, more than just the, the streaming service, but I think they have that as well. It, it says that one's coming soon as of this article. No, this is from last year, actually. So, yeah, PlayStation, PlayStation Now for Windows uh, is the service. So, yeah, it very, it, you know, and I'm always looking out for are these an alternative for me to me buying a PS4, you know, because I have plenty of hardware around that could run something like this. And I think that, so. So things like this, are, they're going to run at 720p. They're going to you can run them in a window. I think where yeah. where you're going to and, and maybe it doesn't matter to you. It's primarily 
back catalog PS3 and a minimal amount of PS4 games. So you're not going to mm-hmm. be getting you're not going to be getting the launch titles no. or anything. But no, but what, what I think is cool. But is, look what I just got excited mm-hmm. about from a 360 original Xbox and three Wii games at the thrift shop mm-hmm. the other day. For, I spent like 30 bucks on. I'm fine if you you're telling me I'm going to pay uh, a few bucks a month and get some of the older games. I'm cool, and it's that it's that Netflix theory, right? It's oh, I'm down for the few Netflix games. It's yeah. a it's a whole catalog, right? Right of games. There's over right now on PS Now. There's over 500 games available at 20 bucks a month. Yeah. You're not going to run out of content. No, soon. no, no. And versus how much you're going to spend on newer games, or even buying any of those used or 10 or 20 bucks a piece, you're fine. You're fine, and you get to relive a lot of stuff. I'm looking at this here. Um, um, there's some specs that posted. That, this is, again, an article that's almost a year old, so I don't know if these have been updated. But they're saying, you know, 3.5 gigahertz Core i3 or 3.8 gigahertz AMD something something, uh, Windows 7 and up, uh, the 2 gigs of RAM. Two, 2 gigs of RAM? Really? Yeah. I don't even want to run Windows with 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, sound card, USB port, uh, uh, internet of about 5 megabytes per second. Uh, megabits, bytes, bits, whichever bits, one they use. Um, so yeah, you're good. It is, I love that accessibility. So you know, what I like ex- accessing. What's that? That pizza box right there, <laughs> right there. Uh, thanks to our friends at Slice on Broadway at sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun. If, if we're, we're probably have another one very soon. If nothing else, they're gonna at least uh, we're gonna have them to cater our uh, 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 events coming up here at the new studio. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, ch- check them out. They've been uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepper pepperoni pizza for several years now. Uh, great to hang out there and, uh, and, uh, and 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 feed the guests that come in here. On a Tuesday night, we got a lot of new faces coming in for the Wrestling Mayhem show later in the evening, and we're going to have a ton of new faces popping in, and they're going to be supporting us in our uh, new place up here on Broadway Avenue that we're currently in the efforts of uh, uh, moving in over the next couple weeks. Um, You can see some tentative stuff on our schedule about when that is expected to happen, and uh, keep an eye out for some very special events we're looking to have around that. Uh, But thank you so much for them for supporting the show. Uh, uh, I mean, we're at the point... And I know this is the wrong show for this, but we're at the point where we have fans of the show going to wrestling shows with signs that say "Eat at Slice." <laughs> I love it. I just nice. had it at the at the show I was in McKeesport, so not far away. This isn't like you know we had that one guy putting up a ring in Austin, Texas, that was uh, saying, "Man, I'd love to have some slice." Yeah, to one of our friends that 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 worked on the show and worked with that that group. Uh, so, but we have like we have this is a, this is on the ground viral marketing. I love it. I love that we're we're supporting uh, a, a great beach view business, supporting our own neighborhood here, and helping it grow and help it get out there. And of course, check them out. There are other locations in uh, Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Great to see these guys growing and everybody getting uh, getting their slice on. Thank you so much to them. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. Let them know. Heard about them on the Awesome Cast. And maybe, you know, you're bringing your sign to wrestling or something like that. So they love that. They retweeted. They, they, they love that stuff. So uh, we really appreciate it. Um, so from there, we had some submissions I want to touch base on. Uh, Chris, uh, our buddy Chris Whitlatch, always keeping an eye on the VR and the 360 and, and kind of the next uh, age of, uh, of video games. Uh, VR Studios announces the VRcade Arena and Attraction Management Platform that they're looking to roll out here. Uh, so it's it's kind of, this is a deep business, a B2B kind of thing. You're, you're not going to be picking this up for your home, I don't think. But this is one of those things that could be like the, oh, your security is insecure, VR Studios. Or VRstudios.com if you want to check out like kind of more visually what the company's about and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, their technology is is kind of talking about like uh, uh, taking multiple VR headsets and their it's, you know multiplayer games, things like that. And uh, I mean, this is you know, this is the next Dave and Buster's, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. that, that's what I would think. And they and it looks like this this place specializes in taking it and taking it anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like pop it up in the middle of like a Comic Con or pop it up in the middle of Replay FX, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So very, very cool. You know, we have Time Zombies popped up here. Uh, there was like kind of a shootout game, VR Showdown with the <laughs> Robot Cowboys, apparently. There's always a shooter game, uh, uh, you know, the, with, the, with the new controller for the, the Gear VR. There was like, oh, we'll go download the free uh, Ghost Shooter uh, Old West game. So I mean, this this kind of is a little bit of uh, that plus 
I think this kind of replaces laser tag a little bit too, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So. Especially if you don't have the space. It's so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't need a, a, a giant storefront for people to run around in. Maybe a little less uh, insurance risk with that as well, right? I'm sure. So uh, that's you awesome. You could make an endless scare house. Yeah. Where they were stuck in there forever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> get out. Let me leave. Awesome. And uh, also, nope, Sorg didn't like that. Katie, I'm sorry. R.I.P. Oh. <laughs> R.I.P. the Yik Yak. Yik Yak. Sorry. Yes. We hardly knew you. <laughs> I oh. actually opened that like two months ago just to see if it was still around. And it was it was still alive and kicking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess they just weren't couldn't financially stay afloat. Well, according to this, they they, they uh, uh, officially shut it down uh, well, when this was written uh, in. Oh, this is from April, actually. <laughs> so they were spinning down uh, uh, as the school year was going out. Um, they they used to be valued at uh, at four hundred million dollars after raising more than seventy three million in capital, um, and uh, and they just they just ran out of steam, I guess. So they founded they were founded in twenty thirteen. They had a pretty good run. That that's a good lo- that's a good run for what was that four years? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good run for a, a social media app that didn't become Twitter. Yeah, or Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, how many have come come and gone? Uh, uh, explain for those maybe the uninitiated what what was the appeal of Yik Yak for Yik Yak you? Yik Yak allowed you to chat with people near you anonymously yeah oh. well and that's yeah. one thing that they changed recently was you couldn't be you couldn't be as anonymous anymore no that was one of the big things that people were like ah no I'm and they left yeah because mm-hmm. you could post and comment on things and essentially reply to reply to anything nobody knew who you were I liked it because there was I used it in airports a lot yeah uh-huh. To figure out where stuff was, mm-hmm. like I would post, like, "Where's is there a Starbucks in this airport?" Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, "Hey, does anyone know where this is in this city?" And usually, I'd get a couple hits with. Oh, neat. Finding stuff like that because there's not. I mean, you've probably been in more airports recently than I have, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> like Atlanta is very nice. Like they have a whole self-guided map on the wall that's touchscreen based, yeah. and everything's mm-hmm. inventoried, whatever. But like, if you come to like Pittsburgh Airport and say, "Where's the Where's the Chick Fil A?" and you're in con- like one of the offshoot concourses, wait, there, there's a Chick Fil A in there? Yes, yeah, in the center. I had no idea. See exactly. I had no idea. How, how many times <clears throat> I've been through there? Yeah. So there. So it's stuff like that, like that I was using it for, like when I was in locations that I was unaware or hadn't been before. Mm-hmm. I was using it because people were actually pretty responsive. Nice. And it's not like you can find maps of things. It's not like I was trying to find the closest CVS or anything. My, it was very very and, point based. And I think that's been kind of updated with <clears throat> um you know, I think they've been better with that. Google has a lot of in airport maps particularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and at least the maps or the, the airports, <laughs> listen, the airports I've been in are either really, really huge or really, really tiny. There is no in between. <laughs> so, um, so, so I haven't had that issue quite so much, but, uh, also pokey stops help me too. I always know where the Starbucks is, uh, in an airport, but, uh, yeah, too bad. Too bad. CR. Uh, uh, we had a lot of fun with the attack. There's actually a video on our channel. Or uh, I forget it's on Awesome Castle or the Sorgatron Media YouTube channel uh, where we read the Yik Yaks. Oh yeah, that was fun. That was that was a good time. We gotta find a new one of those to do. Games, video games for men working fewer hours. Eh, that's a weird one. For. <laughs> Uh, and uh, oh, and, uh, thanks to Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh uh, for uh, that last article about Yik Yak. And I choose you, Pokemon Ring, that I'll show you as soon as this ad ends. Um, so yeah, it's a an audio. Uh, it's an officially licensed uh, uh, Pokemon Link, a ring, because. Uh, why not at this point, right? Uh, so, up oh, there it is, and they they got um, they got all of your your evolves in there as well. So um, it makes sense. I mean, I did I just did just uh, attend a uh, video game wedding, so uh, of course. And the Nintendo Switch is getting a Joy-Con keyboard from Brandon as well. Makes sense. Yeah, it definitely makes sense because they don't have voice chat. So, really? Yeah, there's no. In fact, they're saying that the first iteration of joy or of voice chat is going to come with 
the newer Splatoon, and the way you actually do voice chat is you connect to an app on your iOS device <laughs> and use your iOS device for chat while you play. And I'm guessing they're going to have an Android version too. Mm -hmm. but the one I read was <clears throat> it's, it's going to be iOS based. The other question that I have, I, I, I've heard a lot of rumblings about people digging through um, the switch code. And along with the fact that there's an S emulator in there, I've heard there's also remnants of a web browser in there. Hmm. So I wonder if we're going to see kind of how Microsoft's taken a step back from their gaming console being kind of an all-in-one media device. And I wonder if we'll see over time the Switch get additional capability to kind of make it more of a... For the people that buy an iPad or have a phone primarily or like an iPod touch for gaming, mm -hmm. I wonder if this will kind of bridge that gap to give a browser... Netflix, all that other stuff. Yeah, and, and I think they've, you know, unapologetically said, we're not going to do a half-assed thing. Like, we, you had, like, oh, they're going to have Netflix on Hulu. And it's like, and? Mm -hmm. You know, every, basically everything it does at this point, right? Uh, so I, I kind of like the idea that I'm saying, no, we're a gaming device, you know. And and hey, Xbox made that mistake at first, right? Where, where they went too far into entertainment. Everybody's like, yeah, we want games. What? Why are you, this is E3. It should be about the games. What's, what's, what's up? Um, so I just got a really scary moment where it wanted me to do my giant update on Windows right now. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Um, anyways, Katie. Hi. Tell me about this feature on Waze that's, uh, popped up here. I know I got the, 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 the prompt at the beginning when I was, I was using it yesterday and I'm like, I do not have time to explore this thing right now. Yeah. So you can use your own voice to make voice commands for you to be driving. So you stuff. can yell at yourself or, yeah. or, or you can be like, Hey idiot, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and turn your butt around. But yes. Yeah, so essentially you go through and you voice, you record all of these statements, like all set, let's go, uh, keep right, keep left. It's not, it won't read the streets. So it's like one of the other generic voices on there that doesn't actually give you the streets, mm -hmm. but it'll tell you keep left, Mr. exit ahead, please report it ahead. Um, but yeah, you get to record all this on your own so you can hear your own voice or your family could hear it because you can share it with others. Oh, that's okay. Share it with your loved so ones. So does this mean <laughs> if, say, I I did a podcast that had like, like a fun character that people kind of got into, I don't know, or a certain web series about a hobo, mm -hmm. uh, could I record and share yeah. the characters? Yeah. This. This, that's one of the things is they're trying to work with uh, YouTube creators to help them create their own voice packs for distribution to fans. This is a marketing opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like it. I like it. So do I have to use the app? Yes. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, uh, well, you, you can put a good microphone on there. I know. You can I know. put a good microphone on there or... I wonder if you could use like the mic input. Well, you could actually use like your snowball mm -hmm. with the USB adapter. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's there's a lot of good quality stuff that you could use. How do you actually capture the content? Just in the app, it, it looks like you you select. It tells you like uh, you know start driving. Oh, you know, there's a list that says you know all set. Let's uh, go. There's a sendable link in a mm -hmm. in a. Oh okay. oh, and then it's a sendable link from there. Okay. Um. So I think it too. Where I mean. I wonder if this will be become a copyright issue because I'm thinking like I could take all kinds of Iron Man <laughs> sound clips yeah. with Jarvis and throw them in here and that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. But if you did them and you just did them for yourself, yeah, it's not a problem. Right. It's a lot of work to just do for yourself, but sometimes I like that customized experience. Somebody out there will probably have it available that has done it. So yeah, that's that's probably going to become a problem. So we'll we'll see if you know Waze kind of cracks down on that a little bit then. So and then maybe. Google steals all your voice prints and yep yeah exactly. Remember, yeah, remember this is a Google company. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um you know we're uh, uh, we, we we poured one out for Yiki Yak already. Chilla <laughs> Chilla, what else do we have to pour one out Aww. for today so, that that has gone away? So Microsoft has ended support for Windows Phone eight point one. No, Wait, there's still some Windows ten mobile hanging around out there, but but it's it, eight one's gone after mm. three. I can't believe it's been three years it's or well 
I don't know. It seems longer than three years ago. Or maybe it's it's such a shame. There was so much potential. Like, it was not a bad phone. It right, was not a bad OS. Especially the picture they have up there from the Lumia 1020. That's the one with, like, the 41 megapixel camera mm-hmm. with the crazy zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited because Nokia is partnering back up with some some uh, lens, I think, Carl Zeiss, maybe. Yeah, and I think some, so. Some mm-hmm. of the other companies. And they're going they're going back to Android. So mm-hmm. I'm 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 really excited to see what they come up with. They did an amazing job with the Windows platform that unfortunately just couldn't take off. And I've seen even on the Windows 10 side, even with the universal apps, I, I don't see many of them even coming to Windows 10 mobile. So I'm interested to see where that goes. But yeah, pour one out for the for the good old Windows Phone. Windows Pocket PC is actually what got me started prior to blackberry so this this wow. was a pretty big deal for me throughout the years yeah well we we had a windows mobile 3 3.5 or mm-hmm. something device missy had it before i even got a got an iphone yeah because you had like the the what was it, the 85 35 and the and the tilt i think or tilt 2 or whatever it and, was and remember do you remember the sidekick uh chachi had at least maybe two iterations of the sidekick so the sidekick that was i can't remember the name of the company danger Mi- danger microsoft actually bought them yep and, and that's and then and they then did, did nothing with them. no no they did something oh they did they did the kick the kick it was a text only phone i believe oh, i wasn't aware of that i remember the kin that lasted on verizon for like two weeks kin maybe i'm thinking the kin yeah, that, that only made it like two weeks on Verizon. Really? Like, like yeah, yeah, right? It was a messaging phone. Like, yeah. it wasn't a full-on... Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was basically a feature phone mm-hmm. instead of a smartphone. So, it just, like, boiled down. It was just that... Because that's what the, the sidekick was, was it gave you that big keyboard so you could text mm-hmm. when all you really had was texting. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the good old days. Um <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> this was, I love the conversation that happened around this. ESPN's X Games will stream live in VR on Samsung headsets, um, including skateboarding, BMX. Uh, it, it, some, somebody, somebody commented on this. I was like, this is unnecessary. And I wanted to respond to that. Uh, and I meant to on, on the, on the, on the messenger or on the, uh, 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 awesome cast group, uh, for it. Yes, it's unnecessary, but Everything needs to be attempted before we find out what works with VR and 360. And I think this is that. And, of course, with the brand name behind it. Um, I mean, you, you get into, if you get your hands on, on a Gear VR or Oculus or something, there's a lot of experimental stuff. And it, we're still kind of figuring out what will kind of take off from there. Right, Chilla? Mm. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> I was raising, you know, I got, I, I was making an elephant I, I went, point I, in. I, I went into Don. an Amazon hole of trying to find old Microsoft <laughs> Kins for sale, and I got all excited because there was one for eight dollars and seventeen cents. <laughs> but then it, then it admitted that it was a replica dummy toy phone. Oh. <laughs> That's terrible. Maybe it's like the display model from from the thing. from like a Verizon. No, store. I, I was saying, you know, <laughs> from a Verizon story. <laughs> Uh, I was saying, like, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of experiments in 360 and VR until we figure out what people are actually going to kind of glom onto, right? Yeah, and, and obviously the gaming's one thing um, that I think will be an easy easy pitch. Where I'm interested in seeing it is what what do businesses do with it? I was actually thinking at work today. I wanted to create a graph that that kind of charted out a bunch of information over time mm-hmm. but then i wanted to add more data elements to it and i thought wouldn't it be cool if i had this in vr you could let someone actually kind of take the chart as they're looking at it and flip it this way mm-hmm. and have more information behind that data kind of giving you the depth and rotation um that's where i kind of saw it the other thing that we've talked about at work is it would be nice because there's a lot of people that that have six to eight monitors, and be it's a lot cheaper to put that in a VR environment. Mm-hmm. And our, all they're looking at is a bunch of very basic line charts and numbers. So it's not like you have to worry about high frame rate graphics or crazy, you know, color depth. We're t- we're talking a red line, a blue line, a green line, and some numbers flip flopping. So that's where it'll be interesting to see. I'd like to see where the enterprises take it beyond our Minecrafts and our our kind of 
the, the Samsung gear type devices. I'd like to see the gear type price with more enterprise need or or mm-hmm. push or at least a closer price or, or yeah. you know, some, something middle of the road perhaps uh and then of course katie you're i mean you guys have been messing with three 3d video or 360 video and photos and thing you're kind of looking more experiment experiential kind of experiments yeah it's it's trying to figure out where we go from here is it do you make it into a game do you turn it into you know like trying to figure out where which environments you mm-hmm. want to put people into and because you want to try different characters what? and I think Airbnb is going to be big on this, right? Yeah. With the new, so what is Airbnb, some realty company, and IKEA are mm-hmm. all boarding onto the iOS platform between AR and VR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah where, where it where it's experiential and you're trying to convey a concept where you can't get to it, mm-hmm. I, I think that's where it's going to where it's going to land first. Um, I'll be interested to see where where people take it after that. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll kind of see see where it goes there. I mean, we're all we're all not experiment because we're all we're all touching on 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 experimenting on hands on from the creation side too. So mm-hmm. it's just going to be you know it's going to be a lot of weird stuff the next few years for yeah. anybody that's kind of looking at these kinds of things. So. Um, from there, uh, Katie, uh, I saw uh, Instagram has a new update. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah. Not, you're, you're not no. excited or no. No. What? I just, all I want in life from Instagram, <laughs> clickable links, clickable links in my freaking post. Well, but you can, they're clickable in the story, aren't they? Not no, unless the you're, no. the ads are. Yeah. Okay. The links are clickable. If you are a business that has like 10,000 plus followers, I believe is what they have it at. Wow. And uh, yeah, how many businesses that yeah. we would be working with yeah. do that? So, so. If, if you ever use, if you're still using Instagram, one of my pet peeves is the fact that you can't put in um, text. You know, here's my photo or video text. Click here unless mm-hmm. you buy an ad, mm-hmm. obviously. And mm-hmm. that's I think that's probably that, that's the reason it's probably there's a hold up is they want you to buy the ads. But now you can reply to stories with video and photos. So it's Snapchat Junior again. <laughs> How how often I feel like I'm seeing Instagram updates like every week or every mm-hmm. other week. I mean, it, I'm really waiting for the uh, AR dancing hamburger from them at this point to counteract the dancing hot dog from Snapchat. Dancing hot dog. I need to pull up the dancing hot dog now. Yeah, because like we couldn't. I can't get enough of this thing you got going on with the the dancing hot dog. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a break dancing hot dog, if you didn't know already, as one of the options. Which is a fun AR thing that they really haven't done a whole lot with yet. It's kind of was their first little foray into it. So beyond mm-hmm. just the filters, you can make hot dog dance. And what did you do with said hot dog dance? I put said hot dog. Which one are you pulling up? I'm pulling up oh, the, the last, last one. one. Oh, okay, yeah. So I worked the uh, snapshots with Stanley, the Stanley Cup event, and they hadn't brought the cup out yet, and I decided that the hot dog should be the cup instead. And it was playing turn down for what, so it was turn down for cup. And so, yeah, you can watch a dancing hot dog pretend to be a Stanley Cup. And that syncs up pretty well on that table. Yeah, you yeah. you can move yeah. it. Like you kind of just once you once it appears on the screen, you just take your finger and you can set it. You see a little like black shadow. Oh, so where okay. you see it <clears throat> is where it's gonna land, and it takes a little like maneuvering sometimes to get it to line up because it maybe where it picks up the image. But yeah, there's actually there's a uh, Spider Man Homecoming app for iOS and Android. Mm-hmm. It's like Peter Parker's phone, <laughs> and inside the phone there's like an AR set up for spider-man and you actually it detects wall and surfaces oh neat and you can he kind of he'll attach himself to your monitor and kind of hang there it's it's a but it does it doesn't i like that kind of because it's quicker and Mm -hmm. easier um the ar it took me a while to get it to find the surface and and actually kind of show spider-man there but it was it was pretty darn cool so I'm I'm guessing we're gonna get a lot of gimmicky AR stuff in yep. in, in the coming year mm-hmm. before we get a lot of full fledged business application. 
Yeah, and uh, it, well, I mean, we we've talked about it and we I think we've seen a little bit more going on too with like you know Snapchat experiment experimenting with things like maps. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for Instagram's version because it'll have all the Facebook stuff in it. You know, <laughs> I, I just it's it's coming right. Like mm-hmm. you know, they're just going to ape each other for this entire thing. Um, so, but I'm I'm still kind of dedicating to the Instagram platform. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, so Chilla. I had one here for you. Did you see that Ubuntu Linux is available in the Windows Store? And I know, and having borrowed your laptop and realizing how insane you are with uh, virtual machines and <laughs> Linux, and I don't even know what was going on there because because I know I'm in my own thing, my own walled off area on your laptop, but. I could see like all this stuff that was installed. <laughs> oh, did you see like BlueStacks was installed? Which yeah, is, like, like a, stuff like that. It's a virtual version right, of Android. Right, and then right. I had, I actually have a, a disc on there with like Windows 7. I have another right, flavor of Linux. Right. So you got a lot of stuff going on on one laptop. But here is like in the Windows Store, you can install Ubuntu, which I have. Uh, this laptop here is running Ubuntu. Uh, half of these actually have a dual boot with Ubuntu. Uh, I mean, it's a nice non-Windows thing, and I would use it for everything if, if Wirecast had something compatible with it for, for Desktop Presenter. Um, so this opens the door to a lot of people using it, right? In, in, in some regards. In some regards. And I know when they made this announcement, I think they made it a few months ago when they started talking about the creator's update that's coming in the fall. It's not going to be just Ubuntu, and I don't know if this article. Yeah, so you can ex- so you you should expect to see Fedora and SUSE as well. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it is around command line and Bash and SSH. So a lot of people script like a lot of the a lot of the Linux people love their their scripting languages, and this is going to bring that scripting language to the Windows side. So I thought that was pretty cool. What I don't know is, does it give you the full-fledged, like, uh, what is it, GNOME interface and all the all the different Linux interfaces? I don't know because it was it was quasi limited from the little bit I was scanning in here, uh, so it hasn't exactly. It's, it's focused on running command line utilities like Brass or SSH. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is you don't have to dual boot or install a virtual machine. So this isn't necessarily so it, it's it's sandbox. So it, yeah. it, it's sandbox within Windows. So you're not booting it up on its own. Which you know, depending on what you're doing, if, if you can really. And the other thing is, I've seen people try to do that and they really mess up their machine because mm-hmm. dual booting, you got to take over kind of the boot manager and have a and menu. Windows and Windows 10 gets weird because they're, they're, if I remember, the Windows 10 boot manager is now kind of tied to some of the hardware in a weird way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's right for really getting messed up. Yeah. So, so this is, I hope they do more with it. So, Um, so if you're a, um, if you've been kind of scared to try Linux because of dual booting, having to wipe a computer, making a CD, put it on a thumb drive, that kind of stuff, it's a click away. You can try it out and see what it's about. And maybe it's a nice little toe in the water for you. Uh, to try something outside of Windows. And again, this is part of Microsoft's kind of commitment to say, hey, we're going to work alongside all the platforms, including Linux. So, and 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 understanding guys like you and programmers like certain Think parts of Think about the people doing Raspberry Pi work, right? I mean, right. The, you, right. if you can load that on here, that'd be pretty darn So you cool. can develop it, test developing. it, put it in there, and then load it on a card and throw it on a Raspberry Pi and you're good to, for further testing. The, the other thing I think that's interesting about this is if you think about Microsoft's concept of the Windows S where the only thing you can install on those devices is has to come from the wow, store. Wow, that opens that up. So now this brings, like, that's the, the, I mean, obviously there's a whole sector of people that like this, but they they there's a, there's a stat out there that's, and I don't know if you know this, the, the top two applications installed on windows that are not core to the windows application like internet explorer or edge or whatever the top two are chrome and itunes in that order Mm -hmm. (laughs) or the top two applications installed on windows machines Mm -hmm. so the but this this gives another area where people can install this and i'm i'm guessing the scripting that's embedded in linux is probably going to play heavily in minecraft 
when you look at the Minecraft for education and the scripting stuff they're doing on that side. So I'm guessing this is also to get the student population and the younger population that wants to have these types of capabilities, but in a safe sandbox protected environment, I could see this definitely being of use. Okay. And finally, as we like to end the show, is Katie's uh, Porn Technology Corner. They're pushing uh, the limits of technology. They, they are. They are. I, and, and, and amazingly, there's no imagery in these uh I picked a articles. good article for you. You, you this, did. This Thank you very much. This was the cleanest one I could there, find. There, there it is. But I think, for you. I think I've seen visuals of this and with like, this is this is, this is is how this is how the machines will get us. Yep. Uh, explain what's going on. Uh, once again, our wonderful friends at Pornhub always, <laughs> always pushing the limits of technology around porn. Yes. Uh, so now they have interactive videos that sync up with your sex toys. Mm-hmm. So you'll be watching some sort of video on your device and then you have a sex toy of a certain, well, right now it's just the boy sex toys. Um, oh, not as in the boy man. parts. No, not as in the boy parts, I should say, but boy enjoyable. For the boys. Yeah. Right now the ladies have to wait a little bit longer. It sounds like they're still working on that one, but it essentially, depending on what's happening in the, the video, mm-hmm. it changes the speed and rhythm. And uh, slower scenes, they will slow it down. And but it go, it works with what you're watching. So it's pretty cool that they're able to interact the devices wirelessly to interact like this. I this is where I start getting concerned about a malfunction. Yeah, I would too. Right? I, was I mean, this is where it's or like, lady, yeah. you know? <laughs> and it's wireless too, so it could probably be hacked over the air. Could you imagine? You're just like driving by, like you know how there was like, there's always like the big, uh, don't use your remote, your car, your car remote starters because someone could hack into your, you know, like all these like, and now we can do this. People are gonna be like, I'm gonna drive by. That'll be the news story. Mm-hmm. People are now hacking your <laughs> sex toys <laughs> wirelessly. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah i'm like you know that that episode of law and order where they have just like the the worst uh uh, uh murder scenes mm-hmm. like the, the very special edition where they try to try to incorporate this um but uh yeah uh because you know I, I could just see that going really bad you know it's like all right that's an interesting idea but mm-hmm. i'm not gonna be beta testing that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah absolutely not so <laughs> and i'm just trying to think like like this is no no i saw i i presume this was something from like like the the, the conference or something that uh that they have and it was just this big contraption with the vr thing on your head mm-hmm. and things attached to you mm-hmm. we'll just go there it just looks unwieldy like you know we talk about how you need like basically a room for vr you kind of need one for this exercise room porn room yep. you know i mean it, it's just it's 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 a big dedication to masturbation mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yes very true that's that's yeah, that's quite true I'm, I'm wondering in the future like we'll be on zillow and it'll be like this will be an excellent vr porn room. <laughs> like study slash vr porn room <laughs> or, or will they not just, quite enough big enough for a bedroom but you could do other things or will they just make it into a suit It'll be some kind of suit you put on. Mm, everything all in one. It's, it's, right, di- right. it's dishwasher it's... safe. <laughs> 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 I don't want to put that in with my food cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta clean it somehow. I, yeah, you do. I, mm, I'm sure there's all kinds of articles about that on Fletchlight's website. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they're, they're one of them. They're one of the toys that'll sync wirelessly for you. <laughs> oh, oh, so Fletchlight isn't on yep. this. There mm-hmm. you go. So yep. there you go. Uh, technology being pushed all over the place. Um, <laughs> as far as... <laughs> Jeez, shout out to our friends. Rep- Replay FX are having their event uh, at the end of this month. I'll be around. Um, I, I haven't got a word. <laughs> I, I, I signed up for volunteering and then I just got a bunch of stuff that I, I just got signed up for doing around outside of it. So we'll see how that week goes. So much for that staycation happening. Um, but, you know, they're uh, going to be go- going on uh, July 27th through 30th uh, here in Pittsburgh, the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. It's a awesome thing where you go down, pay your money for the day. Everything's set on free play and it's just uh, they have console games, pinball, arcade. It was a blast last year. I definitely recommend you guys go checking it out. Uh, so go purchase tickets. And also, uh, volunteers, uh, they're they're looking for volunteers. Uh, you will get um, everything from swag bags to 
to uh, a free admission uh, for a day, for a weekend, depending on how much you do. Uh, the form is right there on the front page. Uh, so please go do that, and uh, and everything from like even if uh, you you want you know depending on what your schedule looks like, they start setting up on Monday, and uh, it actually starts running on Thursday, uh, publicly, and then of course uh, break down the next week. So anything you can get in there to give them a hand. Uh, great guys are working over there at Replay FX uh, that we've had on the show, and we've we've, we've done some stuff with uh, um, in the past, and uh, just want to make sure we support the, the Replay Foundation and Papa. Uh, so, uh, go, go check that out. And I'm, I'm going to see if I think this, the other thing's a public thing, but it might be another opportunity to be involved there. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure to tweet it out here, uh, in the near future. Um, also there is a boot camp happening at the Beachview library next Wednesday, July 19th, right across the street from the public meeting for the streetscape here in Beachview. So that'll be interesting and maybe hard to park. Uh, so, uh, uh, keep an eye out for that. And I think that's all the technology based things. Oh, hey, shout out. I was supposed to go to it, and then I had a thing with my family come up. Uh, but there is a new creative media meetup group I just um, got attached to. Did I turn myself off from it? Bring your blog. Da, 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 da. Yeah, <laughs> Pittsburgh Digital uh, Content Creators Mastermind helping happen out at the uh, Market District out in um, Robinson at the, at the town center. Um, in the cafe there. Um, you can go check that out on Meetup. Bring your blog, video, or web business creativity. Uh, so that's at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, so I feel bad for ducking out of it after saying I was going to go. So uh, so please, somebody, go go check that out there. if you're Pretend you're sword. Pretend you're me. There you go. That's what we can do. Um, so uh, thank you so much, everybody, joining us here in the chat room. Thank, out, thank you to, to, to Brandon, John Carmen, popped in. Mom. Uh... <laughs> 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 always checking in on me uh and of course uh, um everybody uh that uh, that listens to us and shares us throughout the week katie what's going on with you what's you where your facebook living from this week are you going back be, for potato patch fries no, uh <laughs> we'll be we'll be at the haunt again it'll be at the haunt update you, you just week. did one from kennywood yes so we, were, enjoyed we, we did a podcast that. with kennywood that's mm-hmm. up on our uh, scarehouse podcast i was listening to that that was a lot of fun yeah nick's awesome i always love it is it, the best name you nick <laughs> Poor Nick, and, and you should just hear the puns. And I'm sorry <laughs> if you're listening to this, Nick. We're sorry, but yeah, the, Nick Paradise, super cool guy. I mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. love what he's done with social media over at Kennywood, and it was great chatting with him and what's coming up and all the fun things they have coming up in the fall. I didn't know they had Black Friday uh, season tickets, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna make a point oh, to take a look yeah. at that. Yeah. So yes, they're very inexpensive, and it's great. And, and they're like they're um, adding a daytime Halloween event. For kids, mm-hmm. which is awesome because the rides will still be running, mm-hmm. and I can actually go check it out because usually we're the same nights. And holiday lights is running through the new year, year. apparently, yeah. so good because that holiday gets pretty busy. So that's kind of nice. So. I saw my first 4D movie there. I saw really? Lego, yeah, the Lego 4D movie. Nice. Highly recommended. Nice. I laughed so hard. It's got to be so much better watching 4D than Wonder Woman was. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so check out the Scarehouse Podcast on uh, scarehousepodcast.com and uh, here on sorgatronmedia.com uh, network as well. Great to have you there. And uh, John Chichilla, Chilla on the internet. Check out his awesome tips on our YouTube and our uh, Facebook for an awesome cast. And chillatech.net. And if you have a Microsoft can, hit me up. I will give you more than $10 <laughs> for it. More than ten dollars. More it. than ten dollars. I wonder awesome. if they were Wi-Fi, because like at least you could. Then... I doubt it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that era was not. Hey, I found an OEM genuine standard back co- back cover battery door, <laughs> so I could start putting this together. Can if you? I yeah. Get to China. Can you, wait, wait. With the stuff that you found, yeah. <laughs> can you start a thread? Can you start a thread in the group about this and just sure. everything you found so far? Um, uh, put the ask out there, and then put everything that you found so far. Oh, and, and like, I want to follow up with this kin thing. So I, I know there used to be a there. There's a there's a penguins player that's very popular and is our captain who was a huge. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> very smooth. No, no. Why would you? I why guess he you? was a huge kin fan. In fact, I think when they dumped them after like a couple weeks, I heard he purchased like five or six of them. What? And as they died off because he was so nervous about the content on them he mm-hmm. would burn them in his fire in a fire pit so oh, no. I, I don't know any i don't know where to get one of these because the last ones i've even heard of have been burned in a fire oh pit, no so. oh no fine fine digging up digging up holes and 
greater Pittsburgh suburbs. Uh, so, um, and of course, please check out everything at uh, SorgatronMedia.com, uh, our great network of everything from comic books to things going around Pittsburgh to haunted houses and, and, and wrestling and tech and everything. Uh, uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us there. Thanks to our friends uh, in our streaming partners, Patreon. I did not mention Patreon. Wow, I missed that. Uh, uh, so shout out to our friends, uh, Matt Weller and, uh, and uh, 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 Mike Fedor. Uh, for uh, supporting us patreon.com slash awesomecast you guys are our bosses you guys are supporting the show and we really do appreciate it Uh, so until next time thank you to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.